Grace Luanga Channel for free meteorology and navigation instruments lessons. Welcome, my esteemed viewers. Welcome to lesson eight of airplane navigation instruments, a program run by Grace Luanga YouTube channel. Grace Luanga. For those watching for the first time, my name is Grace Luanga and my profile has already been given in lesson one presentation. As a reminder, in lesson seven, we looked at compass dynamic deviation. A subtopic of instruments topic. Let's talk briefly about your magnetic compass. Now we'll begin by making the assumption that you're already acquainted with the rules about calibration of your magnetic compass and that you have an up-to-date compass card in the aircraft. We also assume that you know that in order to swing the compass, that is to turn the adjusting screws that are located behind this little card, that you need a non-metallic screwdriver like this brass screwdriver that we bought some years ago from an aviation supply house. More importantly though, this compass has presented problems to us for a number of years, and if not this specific unit, ones like it. At one time we even had a Hamilton air damped compass, you can probably still see the rivet marks here, installed in this airplane. No matter what compass we used, it was almost impossible for us to achieve accuracy greater than 30 degrees. Turning and acceleration errors. I am delighted, therefore, to discuss with you today another topic from the same subtopic. Our topic today is called Turning and Acceleration Errors. Turning and Acceleration Errors cause incorrect reading of a compass bearing due to the magnetic influence of the airplane flight mode including banked turns. Hey, what's going on, good people? Welcome to another edition of This Brother Can F-L-Y. Yeah. <laughs> Time for the gymnastics. Oh, this one's easy to get into. Oh, it's nice and easy. Uh, Seatbelt and harness. Mine is on. You're getting yours on. Circuit breakers. Those are all in. So the dashboard back through between our heads there, um, that's the magnetic compass. I want you to keep your eye on that because that's a good frame of reference. Now, introduction, turning and acceleration errors item is one of the most fascinating items in direct reading compass DRC subtopic because it is complementary to the DJI heading indicator bracket C lesson 2 bracket 
turning and acceleration errors item, therefore, is the magnetic equivalent of DJI total gel drift rate. Of course, if we know the magnetic equivalent of apparent wonder, you can also compute compass turning and uh, acceleration errors. Therefore, I believe that this lesson 8 will be beneficial to all of us. The magnetic compass is one of the oldest instruments installed in an airplane. And in many older aircraft, it's the only direction-seeking instrument. The compass is a self-contained instrument and does not require electricity or any other mechanism to work. Aircraft compasses are considered wet compasses because their cases are filled with liquid. In this case, kerosene. The liquid also helps to stabilize the magnets and keep them from rocking around too much, especially when the aircraft encounters turbulence. Attached to the float is a compass card which labels all 360 degrees of heading for the pilot to reference. You may notice that the compass card looks backwards. In fact, if you compare the compass to the heading indicator, you'll notice that they turn in opposite directions. This is because when you're looking at the compass, you're actually looking at the back side of the instrument, so everything must be reversed. Objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson eight, the viewer will be able to explain the following magnetic compass technical terms by meteorological examples, bracket, where possible, bracket. Direct reading compass, DRC, E-type compass, Compass heading, compass, acceleration error, AE, turning error, TE, undershoot north, overshoot south, UNOS, overshoot north, undershoot south, ONUS, time with turn, acceleration north, deceleration south, and south, accelerate north, decelerate sand and pioneers of compass turning and acceleration errors science definitions we will begin by defining acceleration error bracket ae bracket and turning error bracket te bracket details of the definitions first of all it is very important to remember that compass turning and acceleration errors equation is the magnetic equivalent to the DGI total different equation bracket in terms of direction not magnitude bracket apparent wonder due to transport wonder will occur at the same time as earth rate in the case of transport wonder however the additional factor is that the gyro itself is moved across the earth although earth rate and transport wonder occur at the same time when we come to do calculations we calculate the error for transport wonder separately and add or subtract it to the equation for total wonder. We will look at this in more detail in the companion lesson on drift rate calculations. Compass acceleration error bracket AE bracket Compass acceleration error AE is the DGI equivalent of the earth rate. It is related to the Coriolis parameter F by AE is equal to bracket minus FD bracket or 2 omega dx sine phi. The symbol phi represents earth latitude. The factor, the UDX, represents the 
latitudinal acceleration due to the aircraft. Factors affecting AER, phi, and the UDX. Here we have an aircraft flying to the east with heading 090. If the aircraft accelerates, inertia will pull the magnet center of gravity backward, causing the compass to give a false turn indication to the north, although the aircraft is actually still flying on the same heading. This effect will occur as long as the aircraft continues to accelerate, since once the acceleration finishes and the aircraft flies with a constant speed again, the inertia will disappear and the compass will gradually return to the correct heading indication. And the opposite happens if the aircraft decelerates. In this case, inertia will pull the magnet center of gravity forward, causing the compass to give a false turn indication to the south. Now, again, this will happen as long as the aircraft continues to decelerate. Since once the deceleration finishes and the aircraft flies with a constant speed again, the inertia will disappear and the compass will gradually return to the correct heading indication. <laughs> compass standing error bracket TE bracket Turning error TE is the DJ equivalent of the transport wonder rate. It is related to the relative vortex parameter zeta by T equals bracket minus zeta d bracket O bracket minus kappa v partial v partial y bracket. The symbol kappa represents the curvature of the aircraft motion. The factor partial v partial y represents the longitudinal acceleration due to the aircraft. Factors affecting TE are kappa and partial v partial y. This effect is greater when flying on a north or south heading. And in the northern hemisphere, when turning from a north heading, the compass will briefly indicate a turn in the opposite direction, and then, after a few seconds, it will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a slower rate of turn. So then we say that the compass lags the turn. And on the other hand, when turning from a south heading, the compass will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a faster rate of turn. So then we say that the compass leads the turn. Compass turning and acceleration errors equation. The sum compass turning and acceleration errors is given by minus bracket TE plus AE bracket. That is compass turning and acceleration errors is the DRC deviation due to turning error term and acceleration error term in the aircraft motion. The exam paper specifies which of the terms is applicable. Earth rate equals 15 degrees times the sine of the latitude in degrees per hour. We calculate the error for transport wonder separately and add or subtract it to the equation for total wonder. At the equator, transport wonder will be zero. It will also not occur on flights along a north-south meridian. The formula for transport wonder is Transport wonder equals the easterly component of ground speed divided by 60 times the tan of the latitudes in degrees per hour. For the purpose of calculations, transport wonder in the northern hemisphere is designated minus in an easterly direction and positive in a westerly direction. Special cases of compass turning errors bracket northern hemisphere bracket 
Turning error involving acceleration port, the compass and dial reads. Turning error involving deceleration port, the compass over reads. Turning error involving acceleration starboard, the compass over reads. Turning error involving deceleration starboard, the compass under reads. And in the northern hemisphere, when turning from a north heading, the compass will briefly indicate a turn in the opposite direction. And then, after a few seconds, it will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a slower rate of turn. So then we say that the compass lags the turn. And on the other hand, when turning from a south heading, the compass will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a faster rate of turn. So then we say that the compass leads the turn. Special cases of compass acceleration errors bracket northern hemisphere bracket acceleration error involving acceleration east the compass over reads acceleration error involving deceleration east the compass under reads acceleration error involving acceleration west the compass over reads Acceleration error involving deceleration west, the compass under reads. This effect is greater when flying on a west or east heading. And in the northern hemisphere, when the aircraft accelerates, the compass indication deviates slightly to the north. While when the aircraft accelerates, the compass indication deviates slightly to the south. We can easily remember this with the acronym ANDS, which stands for Accelerate North decelerate south. Now, it is important to mention that the magnitude of this acceleration error will depend on the latitude and how fast the acceleration or deceleration is. Turning and acceleration errors compensation. Turning error and acceleration error become zero at the equator. Overshoot or undershoot by half latitude plus 15 degrees in mid latitudes. And lastly, use timed turn, that is standard rate turn. The goal of a time turn is to arrive at a desired heading using a clock or timer. To do this, simply figure out how many degrees of heading change you want and then divide by three. Why three? Because during a standard rate turn, we cover three degrees of heading change per second. This equation leaves us with the number of seconds we should be turning to reach our desired heading. Now let's try putting this to use. Remember how we said making a turn to the north would cause the magnetic compass to lag slightly behind, then catch up once you've rolled out? Say we're on a heading of 270, and we want to make a turn to 360. Instead of calculating our lead or lag heading to roll out like we do for magnetic compass turns, let's try using this trick instead. Turning from 270 to 360 means we want to change 90 degrees of heading. Now we divide 90 by our 3 degrees per second turn to get 30 seconds. With that in mind, start a timer once you begin the turn to keep the duration accurate. And with no luck required, you'll roll wings level on your new heading. Remember that you must maintain a standard rate turn during the whole duration of your turn. Turning faster or slower than standard rate will make it difficult to turn accurately. At 100 to 120 knots of true airspeed, 15 to 18 degrees of bank should help keep you in the airplane in a standard rate turn. For smaller turns though, like vectors from ATC, when they ask for something small like a 10 degree heading change, you may just want to forego the timer and just count to 3 seconds in your head. This trick makes turns easy, predictable, and virtually eliminates any of the confusion from turning errors. Those are the basics behind magnetic compass turns and time turns. Primarily pilots rely on their working flight instruments and you won't need to use these methods often. However, in emergency situations with equipment failures, these types of turns become critical to the safety of flight and help reduce pilot workload. Pioneers of the compass turning and uh, 
Acceleration Errors Science Sir George Kelly bracket 1773 to 1858 bracket Kelly bracket 6 baronet bracket was born in Scarborough Yorkshire England He was an English pioneer of aerial navigation and aeronautical engineering and designer of the first successful glider to carry a human being aloft in the world. Scarborough really is the queen of seaside resorts. It's the place which has got the lot. Not just one, but two wide sandy bays, perfect for swimming. Then there's the harbour with fishing boats and pleasure boats bobbing about on the waves. And of course, inevitably, I suppose, there are also rows of amusement arcades. But there's more to Scarborough than all this. It's also a place stuffed with historical interest. The 12th century castle over there on the headland makes that point. When you say Scarborough, you think about boats and fishing and things like that. You don't often think about aviation. Sure, you might sometimes see um, a rescue helicopter in the sky, or you might see a private plane, or even a jet plane flying at high altitude towards North America. But one man born in Scarborough had such an impact on aviation design that the Wright brothers themselves credited him with the concepts they used to come up with the very first powered controllable flight. But who were they talking about? For that, we need to go up there. It was here in 1773 that George Cayley was born. Part of the aristocracy, his mother realised that he was really into maths and science and so made sure that that was included on his education and he really, really developed a love and interest in flying. In fact, he became known eventually as the father of aeronautics, although this was likely um, a title given to him well after he died. And as you can see behind me, there's a blue flag commemorating him. The question is, why? What did he do that was so important? For that, we need to travel about eight miles inland to a village called Brompton. A problem solution. The following CPL question was set by CAA and it is available in a book called Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Grace Longa. Question. An aircraft is heading 
210 degrees circumference. Acceleration in a turn of 60 degree to port is then made with reference to the DGI. Immediately on completion of the turn will the direct reading compass indicate 150 degree more than 150 degree or less than 150 degree when the aircraft is uh, A at the magnetic equator B in the southern hemisphere A compass, 指南针, indicates north and south. It was invented by Chinese 2,000 years ago. The ancient Zhenanzhen looked like a spoon. When the spoon was put on a plate, its handle could point to the south using magnetic fields. Time. Viewers, because of time, the general turning and acceleration errors theory cannot be fully covered here, but it is available in a book called Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Grace Luanga. Many thanks to all of you who have uh, shared your video and sound clips with me in order to make the lesson a success. Try to solve that CPL question and I will correct your answer. Meanwhile, those who can't find the book, you can send me an email or SMS and I shall send you the link. I'm always available 24-7. Please subscribe and benefit more from our channel as I look forward to meeting you. I beg you to stop here. Thank you very much for watching me and God bless you. Well, you can't get spa water anymore here in Scarborough, and indeed the spa complex itself has had a chequered history. In its time, it's been washed away by the sea, it's collapsed in a landslide, and in 1876 it was burned down. But now this spa has been lovingly restored, and many visitors choose to come here in the morning to read the paper, have a cup of coffee, and listen to the spa orchestra. By the mid-1900s, Scarborough really was the place to be seen. It was a fashionable resort, attracting visitors from all over the country. And it was about that time that the streets here on the Esplanade were laid out in a grid which centred on the Crown Hotel over there.